All right, I'm gonna do a response to this video made about me by this uh, end times teachers. He's part of this uh, Black Hebrew Israelite movement, and he did this video responding or basically reading out my comments. Uh, was saying about how America is not Babylon, and don't get me wrong, America is a wicked nation. I I'm not like I'm not like somehow pro America. America is a, a wicked, dis wicked, disgusting nation, uh, and America will be judged by God. But is America Babylon? And the answer is no. And he goes over some points. Uh, I'm going to play part of the video, but first I'm going to show you proof that America does not uh, fit the description of Mystery Babylon. And he also brings up the fact that I'm uh, po or pre-trib as well, which I'll answer. I'll answer that later on. But Revelation 17, the uh, description of Mystery Babylon. And there came one of the seven angels that had seven, had, uh, seven vials, not good at reading on a computer, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show thee unto the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Now, let's, let's begin by saying, what is many waters? Well, many waters is basically identified as nations. Roman Catholicism is the biggest religion in the world. It has over a billion followers. There are Catholics in every nation. You know, where are there Americans in every nation? Verse 2, with whom the kings of the earth had committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have made, made drunk with the wine of fornication. I mean, look at throughout history, the Roman Catholic Church controlled Europe, and, in, and even today they control the world. Every world leader has to go bow to the Pope. I mean, the Pope, he can go anywhere in the world, and world, leader, world leaders will bow to him. He, he can even go to these Islamic nations or these communist nations, and people will bow to him. Like politicians will bow to him. The kings of the earth are committing fornication with him, spiritual fornication. So he carried me away with the spirit into the wilderness. I saw the woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Okay. Uh, talks about having a uh, scarlet colored. Well, just look at the Vatican. Scarlet colored. Look, they're wearing scarlet colored robes. You know? Fits that description. Uh. And the world and the woman was arrayed, verse four. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, as seen right here. Uh, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Go to the Vatican; it's covered in gold, covered in jewels and stuff. Having a golden cup in her hand, you know, look at that. During the mass, they lift up that golden cup. During their uh, pagan satanic mass ritual, where they're basically re-sacrificing Christ every single Sunday at mass, this uh, pagan cannibalistic ritual. Um, having pearl uh, full of, full of abom yeah full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication, and upon her name was written mystery of Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Now, Roman Catholicism is full of abominations. Now, don't get me wrong, America is wicked too. I, you know, I've already established that. In fact, I did a whole video called uh, I think it was called like America, the land of abominations or whatever, and I went over some of the filthiness that goes on in America. But Roman Catholicism is, is uh, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Most wicked stuff, whether it be the sodomite agenda, the pedophilia, all this stuff, it all traces back to Rome. Uh, and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, and I saw her and I wondered with great admiration. Like I said in my comment, Roman Catholicism has killed millions, I mean just millions of, of true biblical Christians who refused to bow down to this, this pagan, idolatrous system of Roman Catholicism. And I wonder with wonder with great admiration, go to the Vatican. I mean, you'll just be like, wow. You know, like, you'll just wonder. You'll, you'll be amazed at just how it looks. Um, you know, you can go jump down a couple verses. And, uh, you know, verse 9. Uh, Here is a mind that hath wished them. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. The Vatican is a city on seven hills. You know, seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And notice how the Vatican, or not, notice how Babylon is likened unto a woman. Um, what is America's icon? Uncle Sam. Uh, what is the Catholic icon? The Virgin Mary. You know, the Vatican is likened unto a woman. Uh, seven kings are fallen. Jump down a couple more verses. And uh, first, jump down to verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, the whore, where the whore sitteth, are many peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Again, Roman Catholicism is the biggest religion in the world. It's been even bigger than Islam. I mean, it has over a billion followers. There are Catholics in every nation that speak every language. You know, you can go to any nation, even these communistic nations like North Korea, there's Catholics there. Uh, here we go, you go down. And you know, notice this is in the woman which thou sawest, is that, is that great city, Vatican City. You know, America's a nation, not a city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. You know, um, I saw a video one time, the Pope just 
was able to call a meeting with the world leaders of Europe and just there they are, just right there on the spot. Again, every every world leader has to go and bow to the Pope. You know, the kings he reigns over the kings of the earth. Now I'm gonna go over his uh, pre-trip claim because it's just so obvious that Roman Catholicism is the the uh, whore of Babylon. But I'm gonna go over this claim he makes about me that you know on pre-trip, and I'm gonna go to, through some proofs of the pre-trip rapture uh, right now. So let, let's get right into it. And said, uh, Catholicism is full of names of blasphemy. Pope calling himself Holy Father. Wait, I forgot to mention that too. The Catholic Church is full of names of blasphemy. I mean, the Pope giving himself God's title of Holy Father. That title only belongs to Jehovah God, the, t the title Holy Father. No man should be calling himself Holy Father, but yet the Pope calls himself that. So the Pope is, is blaspheming God. Same thing with the priest calling himself Father. You know, um, the term Father as a religious title is forbidden. You know, call, me, call no man Father. It's that simple. Um, so they're, they are blaspheming God, but just had to put that out there as a side note. Calling himself Father. Look up Babylon. There's lucky, just like Babylon is. And most importantly, Roman Catholicism has slaughtered untold millions of true believers that wouldn't bow to pagan idolaters false cult of Roman Catholicism. Babylon is drunk with the blood of the saints. When has America shed the blood of the saints? Now I'm happy that you brought this up. Because uh which I don't expect you to notice because I we already went to your channel page and you believe in a pre tribulation rapture. But a lot of the Christians teach that they're gonna be here for the Great Tribulation. Now I'm gonna go with that standpoint for a second. Alright, now think about this logically. If Christians are going to be here for the Great Tribulation and America is destroyed after the Tribulation, will then America not drink the blood of the saints then? Even according to the Christian doctrine? Okay, there's one little problem right there. Uh, it says that it shed, you know, past tense, it shed the blood of the saints. It's it's a past event, you know. Um, again, Roman Catholicism, if you do the research, it's killed millions of, of, of Christians who refused to bow to the, to the uh, pagan cult of Roman Catholicism. I mean, nowhere does the Bible say that they're going to be shedding the blood of the saints in the time of Jacob's trouble, you know, uh, falsely called the tribulation. Um, so, yeah, bit of a problem right there. <laughs> Come on, man. And actually, yes, America has uh, been drunk off the blood of the saints, because who are the saints? The saints are the Israelites. Yeah, I mean, you see here, he's uh, part of this this uh, black Hebrew Israelite movement. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't realize that till now, but... Um, Basically, he thinks that, uh, I mean, I, I don't know a whole lot about the whole black Hebrew Israelite thing, but basically, um, from what I understand, they basically say that, that black people are basically the true Jews, and, I mean, I, I, I mean I'd have to do some research, that's, that's pretty much all I know about them, but, uh, let's continue. And I'm not going to deny it is true that the Vatican has killed millions of people. I agree. Okay, and the Vatican is mentioned in the scriptures. The, the Vatican, or, the, you know, Catholic Church... Is, is the uh, the false prophet okay the Vatican is now I agree with him there I mean I definitely think that Pope Francis is the false prophet of revelation um, but the Catholic Church itself I do believe is, is a mystery of Babylon although Pope Francis I think my what my theory for this this uh, the time of Jacob's trouble is I believe that the Antichrist because you see he have these pictures of this long-haired you know white guy this sodomite looking white guy they call it Jesus I've always I've always believed that this guy is actually what the Antichrist will look like let me just show you a picture of that real quick uh, Catholic painting. Oh, okay, I can't spell painting. Oh, Jesus, this is annoying. My keyboard's not working properly. See, see this this long-haired guy they call Jesus. I believe this is what the Antichrist is going to look like. I, I strongly believe it. So, basically, what's going to happen is that this guy will come down, and the Catholics are going to think he's Jesus because this is how the Catholics think that Jesus, despite the fact that. Acts 17.29 forbids making any images of the Godhead, uh, and we're not supposed to make images of God. They, they think this is what Jesus looked like. So I believe the Antichrist will come down appearing like this, and then Pope Francis will basically, because Pope Francis is so liberal. I mean, Pope Francis is so liberal, even many Catholics find him too liberal, and are turning to pre-Vatican II Catholicism. But I believe he's going to come down, and then Pope Francis is going to like hand over the throne to him. He's going to say to Pope Francis, you've made a mockery of, of my church and my, my religion. And Pope Francis is going to still serve him, but he's going to become like the new ultra pope or something like that. That's my theory. I don't, I don't know for sure, but that's just a theory. But yeah, we I agree with him there. The Pope Francis is definitely the false prophet of Revelation. Is the false prophet, not Babylon. Babylon is America, but the Catholic Church 
is defeated. Now, one thing I want to point out is that I do believe America is a daughter of Babylon. I mean, America uh, essentially works for Babylon. I mean, Trump is a Jesuit agent. Trump uh, is just been putting Jesuit after Jesuit after Jesuit into government, like high-level government positions. Uh, the most notably uh, one that I can think of is Brett Kavanaugh. He's an open. He went to a Jesuit school, and he's on a, he's on the Supreme Court. So. Uh, Trump, yeah, Trump bows to Roman Catholicism. So even if America is Mystery Babylon, the rulers are Catholics because Trump is Trump is a Jesuit shell. False prophet, which again is is not it has nothing to do with Babylon itself. It just has to do with the false philosophy of the uh, of the beast, right? Okay, so I, I, you get the picture. I mean, his whole video is fifty four minutes and forty eight seconds. Uh, basically, he's saying that America is Babylon and shows some, some clear proof that America does not even... I mean, look at this. This is a good one right here. You know, lines up perfectly with Roman Catholicism. So, uh, I just wanted to do a response to this. Uh, interesting thing. I mean, I didn't, I watched the whole thing, and um, he brings up some, some interesting points, but I don't have time I don't have time to go through the whole thing. But th that's just the point I wanted to go through right uh, in this video. So, anyway, thank you for watching. God bless you. Goodbye. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to do in the video was I forgot to address his uh, claim about me being pre-trib. So I'm going to show you some proofs for a pre-trib rapture. Uh, and what you do is that you compare scripture with scripture. Um, you don't base your doctrine off of one verse. You, you just compare scripture with other scriptures. So here's some proofs for a pre-trib rapture. Now, Revelation chapter 7 verse 14, compare that to 1 Corinthians 6.11. It says... And I said unto them, and this is talking about in the time of Jacob's trouble, I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest, he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white within the blood of the Lamb. So notice here they're washing their own robes. Well, uh, 1 Corinthians 6.11 says that Christ washes us. Let me show you that. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of our Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So, in the time of Jacob's trouble, they're washing their own robes. Basically, it's work salvation. They're having to wash their own robes. But in this current dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, Christ washes us. We're justified through Jesus Christ. They're two contradicting passages. So that the uh, rapture has to happen before the time of Jacob's trouble, or else you know Paul's a liar, or else you know, or else the Bible's a contradiction. Because if a Christian goes into that time period, then basically, it, you know, basically, they're, I guess they're no longer washed by Jesus Christ or something. It's two contradicting passages. The rapture must happen before the time of Jacob's trouble, or else Paul's a liar. Some more proof of that is Romans chapter 8, verses um, 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, and who, not walk, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. If we're in Christ Jesus, there's no condemnation for us. We're not under condemnation. Compare that to John 5.24, where it says we shall not come into condemnation. Well, in the time of Jacob's trouble, you can come into condemnation. Let me show you how. Revelation 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Uh, you have a contradicting passage right there. So there's no condemnation for us now, but if we go into that time period, we can come into condemnation if we take that mark. So which is it? Is, is Paul lying, or are we going to get raptured before the time of Jacob's trouble? The answer is we're getting raptured before the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, here's some more proof on that. Ephesians 1.13. And again, it, this this thing is, it, it's what I'm doing right now is that I'm basically, this is what you do. You compare scripture with scripture. Uh, Ephesians 1.13, because the scriptures in the Pauline epistles, which are for us today, do not apply to us in the time of Jacob's trouble. The, the body of Christ must leave before the time of Jacob's trouble, or else Paul's a liar, you know, because Paul was writing under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, so ultimately God's a liar, if we're not leaving before that. And in whom you also trusted, Ephesians 1.13, in whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. We're sealed. We cannot lose our salvation. And again, you know, 
according to Galatians verse 14, who is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession and to the praise of his glory. We're a purchased possession. Again, compare that to Revelation 14, 9 to 11. We can, we can lose our salvation if we take the mark. So again, is Paul lying or are we, or are we not going into that time period? It's because we're not going into that time period. Uh, here's some more proof for it. Every single Pauline epistle opens up with peace from God. Uh, Romans 1, 7. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You can go through all the Pauline epistles. They all begin with peace. Well, Revelation 6, 2. Uh, or 6 verse, uh, 6 verse 4, sorry. Revelation 6, 4. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. God takes peace from the earth in the time of Jacob's trouble, but Paul promises us peace from God now. So which is it? I mean, it's two contradicting passages. The body of Christ has to leave before the time of Jacob's trouble, or else God's a liar. Because he promised us peace, but he takes peace from the earth in the time of Jacob's trouble. You know? Uh, and th there's some proof right on the spot. There's more evidence for that. I mean, it, all throughout the Pauline epistles, there's proof of the pre-trip rapture, but that's just some proof I could bring up on the spot. So, yeah, this is my response to his claim claims about me, about me being pre-trib. I am pre-trib, uh, as shown by these scriptures. So, anyway, God bless you. Goodbye.